We will never be effective on the earth until we become strong, sound-minded, fearless Christians who know the Word of God. So, Father, I thank you for your Word. I thank you that it is forever settled in the heavens. And, Father, as I bring it, I pray that you give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to understand. Father, we are good soil, and I thank you that this is a good soil church. Because if they're still here, it means they love the word. And Father, we will bring forth a harvest. Not 30, not 60, but a hundredfold harvest. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you watched last week, I was talking about how important eating is. It is a spiritual practice. I know you think it's just a physical one. It's not. The first sin was eating. They've sold their birthrights over food. Because we know that the belly is the... That basically known as the inward seat of man. That's the way, you know. And when you eat, you're putting fuel into your body. And that fuel is going to be the direction that you're going to walk in and live in. And Jesus, Judas betrayed Jesus over food. I th I'm sure when Jesus says, the one that dips his hand in with me. When he said that he's one who's going to betray me, I'm sure that was Judas' breaking point. What do people do? We, and, and we had a beautiful repentance here last week. I'm not going to give names, but people who, who testified how they, over a business deal, gave up, um, um, over a meal, gave up their promotion in the workplace. You know, businessmen know this well. They take you for an expensive meal, and they know once you've eaten that food, they've got you. You can't say no, and that means your belly is your god. And Christians are forever selling their destinies over plates of food. In church, when you want to plant your ideas in a person's heart, you make them a nice pot of curry, and then when they eat the food, and then they soft, softened, and then they, you are able to plant your ideas in them. Because eating is spiritual. But the intent of the meal was to soften you. If I'm angry with you, not you, I'm just talking the general you. What do you do to the prophet? You cook him nice food. I'm talking about the generalization of this thing. So that you can now, uh, what, what is this thing? Once someone has made you food or bought you food, you feel you can't say no or rebuke or correct. Think about what I'm saying right now. If I come to you with nice food, but you actually wanted to deal with something with me, now that silences you. How is that possible? Because food is fuel. And the name of the tree was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So the food has a name. And that's what you're eating from. So if I'm cooking with deception to soften your, your, your uh, uh, discernment, you need to know, I see what you're trying to do here. And you still rebuke after that because Jesus still rebuked Judas over food. Why do you think when there's trouble, what do we do quickly? Well, let's get together and have a meal. To soften because once we all partake of the same meal, the prominent agenda is established. We need to know this. Eating is spiritual. And when the priests in the Old Testament would work in the house of God, a vital part of their priesthood was eating. They had to partake of the sacrifice. The people would bring a sacrifice. The priests would pre prepare it. But they were expected to eat the sacrifice as well. Listen to what I'm saying. They were expected to eat the sacrifice. Why? What was the name of that meal? Forgiveness of sin. You, you, I wish you could see into the spirit so you can understand. It was forgiveness of sin. The washing away of old. They had to eat that food. The, the forgiveness of sin towards the Lord. The removing of old towards the Lord. And the priests who had to minister in God's presence had to eat that food that was named such. So that the fuel in their tank was forgiveness. The name of the meal they were eating was healing. 
unto the Lord. And if they didn't eat, they would be cut off. So a big part of the priesthood is the fuel that is put in you must be the fuel that is given unto the Lord. So when we eat as Christians, if you're trying to deceive me with food, I'm going to pray over the food and say, Lord, this is for your glory. Thank you for this meal. So your agenda is squashed because I have decreed the meal unto the Lord and your agendas have now been demolished. So it is important for priests to eat a meal. And that's why Jesus didn't just come and be a sacrifice. He made sure that he presented a table for us. If you don't eat the communion, you have no part in it. You can go read through the chapter of John, uh, chapter 6. Jesus said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part in this. If you don't eat the meal, the spiritual meal that God has given to you, listen to what I'm saying. I know that we are too spiritually dead to get it sometimes. If you don't partake of the body and the blood, you are rebellious. You are never ever getting fuel. That is 100% committed unto God. Because eating is spiritual. If the priest did not eat the sacrifice, the fuel in them was never unto the Lord. Why do you think that Jesus made it an important part of our Christianity that as often as we come together, we must do this in remembrance of Him. Now we just, we just take the body and the blood once a year. Hi, once a year, once a month. Some people once a month, once a year. No, no, we, 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 we don't believe like, I don't care what you believe, I believe the word. And if eating can make you sin and sell your birthright, if you have, and, and there, was, there were people came confessing last week, I've done it too. Sold my destiny when someone fed me. They take you to an expensive restaurant and they make you feel special. Order what you want. And then you eat. They don't make the deal until the food is eaten. Because once that fuel goes in, the agenda has got into your body now. What was the name of the tree in the Garden of Eden? Knowledge of good and evil. The agenda is in you now. The name of the fuel and the direction it's going to take has now gone inside you. Yes. So when you eat of the body and the blood of Jesus, the agenda of God is the fuel running the vessel. Amen. That's why the Bible warns us not just to eat with those people. It says, don't even eat with them. Then it goes on to say, it says, these people are spots in your love feasts. What are they doing? We are eating unto the Lord. They want to corrupt the food that we are eating. And they dirty the love feasts of God. And as a priesthood, we need to know the meal, our priestly meal, which is the body and the blood of Jesus. We need to know it. Just now we're going to take it and we need to be fully conscious and aware of what we are doing. We are partaking of His body and His blood. The Bible is very strict and says, you can't sit at the table of the Lord and the table of demons. Eating food offered unto other gods. But if you don't know it's unto other gods because you don't believe in other gods. I don't, we don't, there's another God but one. Amen. But when you, 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 if you're conscious and aware of it and it's going to hurt somebody else's faith next to you, don't eat it. Because they, they are thinking you're endorsing other gods. 
What makes them think you are endorsing other gods? Eating. So let me give you an example to make it a bit clearer. Let's say, for example, there's a, the, the, in Cape Town, they believe in a God called, come on, names don't come. <laughs> Baal, Baal, let's go to the old one, Baal. And now they believe in Baal. I don't. There is another God but one. I don't believe in other gods, by the way. Other Christians do. Their conscience is still weak and defiled if they can still believe in other gods. There is only one God. Amen. But now I go there. I only believe in one God. But they believe in Baal. Now, they, why do they dedicate their food to Baal? They're saying the food that we have is energy unto Baal. Again. Now, I go and eat the food. They don't know that I don't believe in Baal. But they say, look, okay, we dedicated this food to Baal. Do you want to eat with us? I'm like, why not? It's not that simple. They think that I am in agreement with this food that's given to their God. I, as a Christian, am in agreement that this God exists. Because if I'm eating the food, it shows I've approved of the food that is offered to Baal. I could tell them, ah, man, it's a laga, laga. there's no such thing as Baal. They say you can still eat it. It is different now. They know I don't believe. I'm eating it as food. Another example or no, another avenue. If I go, there's the food offered to Baal now. There's another Christian who still believes in Baal. They, they still uh, believe in more than one God. Now, when they see me eating that, they think that I am approving of Baal and the food offered to Baal. So I mustn't eat it because I'm going to hurt their faith because they haven't grown so far in the Lord. They still believe in all this other stuff. They're still immature in their faith. Cape Town is full of that. They still believe in all these other gods. They do. Promoting and talking about Allah. There's no other God but one, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is, Allah doesn't exist. You, if you say that Allah exists, you believe in another God. So I can eat Allah because it's don't don't. It's food. It's just, I say, thank you, Lord. But if I'm eating and I'm sitting there eating this food, another Christian has come out of that, still believes that there's a bowl. Thinking, they think I'm in agreement that bowl exists. What have I done? My freedom caused a weaker one to fall. So I don't do certain things for the sake of others. That's maturity. You live your life not for yourself, you live for, your, for the Lord and you make sure that you don't live a life that offends others. Yeah, but they, they just think, it doesn't matter, you still hurt them. If you just see me pick a beer can up and do this, you think I'm drinking. So I kick a beer can. You don't understand. If they think it's alcohol in my hand, I've now released into the atmosphere that everybody, all Christians cannot drink. And I've now broken people with weaker faith. I've broken their faith. It's not hard. My life is not my own. Amen. So the Bible is against sitting at the table of a demon and the table of God. You can't eat from both. You can't be doing... Now, in Africa, they think they can do the whole forefather thing and the God thing. You can't. You can't. You can't sit at both tables. And why is it always done around food? Because food is fuel for your body. And whatever the field is um, dedicated to will determine the direction that the vessel of God will move in. Amen. When Melchizedek met Abraham from the defeat of kings. Now Melchizedek, you can read in Genesis chapter 14. He was known as a high priest. He came to Abraham with bread and wine. Why? Because priests must always have food that is offered unto the Lord, and they must share it. Priesthood is about eating as well. And we are priests in the kingdom of our God. I'm going to hit hard just now. They are, we are priests in the kingdom of God. So Jesus, our high priest, couldn't leave us without a meal. He brought the bread and wine. Our high priest made sure, and he says, as often as you come together, 
And then we make man-made rules, and then we decide when you come together, if it is a coming together or not. And you can have it as much as you want, by the way. Yes? Amen. When we get the body and the blood, the Bible says do this as often as you come together. So we have communion every Sunday. For you are basically telling his death till he comes. I need you to listen with sharp ears. It says you portray, you are speaking of his death until he comes. Okay? Are you listening? So every time we, we do the communion, the body and the blood, and I've got people to come and share, and they share different aspects and avenues, we are busy telling the story of the name of the table. You, okay. The content, the title of the meal. Are you, listen. So someone would come and explain this about the body and the blood. It was in Afrikaans this morning. The whole place. It was a message all on its own. And when we do that, we are teaching each other this meal. And listen to what I'm saying. We are, it's not the lesser part of the service. We get someone to come share briefly or certain whatever amount of time. They share and they speak what they've seen about the body and the blood. They might testify. They might speak a message. I've said, come and use your discretion. Speak. T do what you must. And what are they doing? They are giving you more content to the meal you're about to eat of. And the more you understand this meal, the more power it will carry in you when you eat it. So when we talk and someone brings this and someone brings that, our knowledge of this meal is increasing. The great work of what our Messiah did to get us this meal as the priesthood of God, it becomes more clearer. So we're not just in the beginning when we first got saved. We just ate and we spoke the salvation message. But then we saw that this meal is broader than that. This meal has more, under, there's a lot more deeper things in this meal than just he forgave us. Oh. So what are we doing? We are talking the story of that great event that took place 2,000 years ago. We are opening up by the Spirit, starting to comprehend the great mystery of God, of this awesome work that He did for us. And when we're talking, this thing gets broader and broader and wider. And you're thinking, wow, Lord, I never knew the cross was so complex. We thought it was just, forgive me, Lord. It is broader than that. It is a priestly meal. And we must know what we are eating. Yes. Oh, we got to know. So when someone, when I ask you to share, please don't come and uh, uh, just think, okay, maybe I must just say two, uh, bring something with like a dynamite package. Come with it and hit it down and plant, and plant some more, uh, uh, elaborate some more in, of what we're about to eat. Yo, man, you should be excited. The meal that we eat is forgiveness. The meal that we eat is healing. Look here. When you eat that meal with that person's agenda, it is gossip and destruction of, a, of your brother or sister. This is the perfect meal. This is the one that is completely and wholly committed unto the Lord. It is forgiveness. It is healing. It is the will. It is inheritance. Because you can't take some inheritance unless the testator die. It is inheritance. It is a washing away of your dirty conscience. It is blessing. It is ha. Oh. When you sit down. And I've eaten, you know, the, the, the Chinese people when they do business, they always want to take you to a restaurant, apostrophe. And they love to take you to the Chinese restaurants. And you ask them, what is this? Not, not what is this. Like, what is this? And they, oh, the Chinese love explaining their stuff. Eh? 
Oh, they love to talk to you. Okay. And then I said, what is this? And I explained it. And I just watched the excitement of explaining the meal and their culture. And they explained it. And oh, they get so excited. Wow. And they tell me, what is this? Like I'm actually asking. I hope it's not a dog. But it's not, what is this? I'm not asking because I'm really interested. I'm interested to find out if it's not a dog or a cat or something. I don't know. Maybe that is bad what I just said. Now, forgive me. Maybe you're thinking, um, okay. But if you come to, if you've, I've come to Cape Town and then you, 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 some of you take, and you've taken me and you've made me this Cape Townian type meal. And I'm like, what is this? That is barking the food. And ninja stars. And you bite a ninja stop. Wow, that's like strong, that one. I mean, when I first got to Cape Town, right when I was a youth pastor, I would be like, wow, these people would bark in their food. So they said, I'm like, what are you eating? I'm like, I don't know, it's bark. I thought you must eat everything. They said, you know, that's cinnamon. I said, no, cinnamon is a powder. Oh, did you tell me? Oh, it's cinnamon bark. They said, yes, cinnamon bark. I didn't know that, but we put powder, powder. And I'm like, wow. So I'm like, oh, oh, that was a strong one. Take it out, it's a ninja star. Bark and ninja stars. Bear all these leaves, actual, like, it looks like gum tree leaves. There's a leaf in the food. I'm like, oh my God, this. they put gum tree leaves in. It looks like gum trees. You know, the line there, I'm like, And I'm look, then I look at there, all they put all the bark, countries, and ninja stars all on the side. I'm like, my plate's empty. <laughs> the Bible says, eat what's placed before you. So then I developed a, 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 a tongue to eat ninja stars and bark. So I'm like, do you eat that? Yes. Because I thought it was the right thing to do, Beryl. So I, st- I do it to this day. And I quite like this ninja stars. I'm like, and I'm watching my wife waste all her ninja stars. Can I eat them? And there's a cinnamon lady. So we always ask, what is placed before us? And then people explain, they say, this is this. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, I don't, and I just, but it's nice. I'm like, wow, wow. So in Cape Town, you don't, we just use salt normally where we're from. <laughs> when we brought salt and pepper, ah. My, when my wife came, when we live in the Eastern Cape, my parents, my father. And when we brought salt and pepper, you know, brass salt, you know. But then my wife does the meat, it's marinated and. So my dad says, like this. What's all this? My dad, it's marinade. No, man. No, 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 man. No, no, no. With the salt and pepper. You do actually know that meat has flavor with salt and pepper. Uh, just in case you didn't know, it doesn't have to always be marinated. <laughs> but I found out that, yeah, the, the taste must be the spice root. But the taste, I'm teasing. The taste buds are switched on. So I have to ask, what am I eating now? Mm, that's a new taste. Wow. They would, how did you make that taste? Like, really? You could butter chicken. Whoa. Mm, yeah. How, hey, Beryl, you're the, the, wow, you're, how do they know to do that? Like we all come from, you know, we just, we, we have, our, I mean, our curry is sweet. Your curry burns. You know, if you go to curry in the Eastern Cape, it's like curry and, you know, chicken, well, curry, and, you know, curry and rice. It's, it's sweet. It's not, it's not burning there. There's no such traces of curry. I don't know why they call it curry when I've tasted curry this side. I'm like, it's not the same thing. And I always love to know what I'm eating now. Why don't you want to know what you're eating today? Why don't you want to know? Why do you just say it's just the body? It's not. It is the perfect meal. There's so much content and information in this. Wow, this meal is awesome. It's safety. It's protection. It's followed by angel armies. When Mephibosheth, which I taught in recent, recently, was promoted to the highest place in the king's, uh, king's castle where he could sit at the, at the table of the king. 
Mephibosheth had to start knowing how to eat like a king. The Bible says when, 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 when we come together, there's some that, that don't eat at home and they, don't, and they come and they glutton themselves on the body and the blood of the Lord. Then the others don't get a chance because they don't discern the body. They're eating like, forgive the word, like pigs in the church of God, not discerning this meal is so beautiful and powerful. It's not how much you eat of it. It is knowing what you're doing. And then, 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 the, then the Apostle Paul goes on to say in Corinthians, there are many that are growing sick and are dying. They're falling asleep. There's many of them that are dying because they don't discern the Lord's body. They're not discerning. This meal is the Lord's body. They are dying because they are not being taught the content of the meal. What is this meal about? What can this meal do for you? I wish I could get you to someone's heart right now. This meal can heal you. This meal can protect you. This, this is the body. He says, this is my body. This is my blood. I'm going to break a doctrine for you. Can I do that? In the Old Testament, it was shadows. So it's, but when Jesus came, it was actuals. So if Jesus said, this is my body, why do you act like it's a shadow in front of you? You see, the church keeps postponing what they already have. And Jesus is the ultimate. When the, the, the old was shadow, the real had come. God in the flesh. Here he is. He's real. So when you take the body and the blood, it is a real thing. Now you say, but it doesn't take, no, you got to, you know, why are we so hard of understanding and in the spirit? It is if you eat this thing and say, oh, it was just a piece of bread. It is his body. When we take it, you say, thank you for your body. But it is bread. Got me. But if you're going to treat it like bread, then it's not going to have the effect. Then it's bread. If it's just grape juice, then the barrel, it is just grape juice. But if you say, Lord, I know it's grape juice, but you said, you said I'm not in shadows anymore. I mean, actuals, when God became flesh, he came to take away shadows and presented actuals. So he gave a real meal for you and for me. Oh, yeah, yeah. So when I eat it, I mustn't say, oh, oh um, yeah, this is symbolic. Don't use that word. Because you just said shadow. Yeah, but we can see it's not real meat. And uh, how long must we still be? You take it and you say, this Lord is your body. And when you eat it, you must not say, okay, it's bread. Then you lost what you were just doing. When, when, when you come to me with your plate, not to deceive me, but to bless me. And you say, this is my best, my favorite one. Then I'll eat it and I'll say, it's symbolic of your best one. This is the perfect meal. Whether we had wafer or bread, you don't understand. It is the information. It is what it is. Now, we're not like the Catholics and say, oh, okay, no, you've got to understand how it works. So when we take it just now, we are partaking of the body. As soon as you say symbol, you disconnect from what it is now. But we know it's bread. But as soon as you go on to the symbol part, you are saying, I'm not in the real meal yet. I just wish you could hear by the Spirit. If you say it's symbolic, you're not in the real meal yet. Who presented his body and his blood? Who is Jesus? God in the flesh. The real. So how dare you say, this is not his body, this is not his blood. You've gone against the wisdom of God. All God's words are mysteries that must be spiritually understood. 
But don't say symbolic of. If you stand up here and say, this is symbolic of, you have just disconnected from your meal. Now you say, but it doesn't taste like flesh. Why do you have to go there? But it tastes like grape juice. Why do you have to go there? Why do you have to now take that moment of a spiritual practice as a priest and talk about grape juice? When I pray for you, I lay hands on you. You need to connect with the healing. Nicole, when I prayed for you, you connected with that healing and you started walking. The next day you're back to normal. Four to six weeks were gone in one prayer. But she could not say this is a symbolic thing. So when you eat the body and the blood, you must not say it's some, I can see it's bread, man. It's kitka. I can see it's grape juice. Oh, but we state in the obvious. No, you've just disconnected us from partaking of this awesome priestly spiritual practice. The priest had to eat. You are busy eating of the sacrifice. Wait, this thing's gonna get, it's gonna get hot now. Richard, do you want to get hot on this side? Amen. So we, as Mephibosheth, had to learn how to sit at the king's table. We need to learn how to eat the king's meal. One day, we're going to sit in heaven and eat communion. Huh? You don't need it in heaven. You need it now. Why would you need it then? You need it now. Now it's going to un unlock. Someone say, now it's unlocked. Unlock. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So previously it says in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. So what is this cross that I'm talking about? The power of God. Verse 23. But we preach Christ crucified of, of chapter 1. Unto the Jews stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them that are called both Jews and Greeks. Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. I said to the Lord, Lord, how come, you know, they always say to Christians, you're always preaching at us. All the time, you're preaching at us. And then we back off now. But God chose the foolishness of preaching. So I can walk into a place now and then they want to mock and say, why are you preaching all the time? God chose the medium of preaching to save souls. It, in the natural mind, it is foolish. Are you sure you could change someone's eternal destiny through preaching? Yes. God chose a foolish medium of preaching to save souls. So where I can walk into a situation and to a group of people and start preaching. Suddenly, destinies are changed through this mouthpiece. Suddenly, my words that were spoken changed that person was on a one-way track road down to you know where. Then they are on a one-way track unto the Lord. He chose the medium of preaching. It is foolishness to the world. So when we look at the body and the blood, it is foolishness. The cross is foolishness. But to us, it is the power and the wisdom of God. And the reason that we, we call it foolish, or the world calls it foolish, is because they don't know the content of that meal and of the cross. Back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Howbeit we speak, verse 6, we speak wisdom among them 
that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of the world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, of wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart, the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love Him. Oh, what did you do? Eye is not seen, ear is not heard, neither enter the heart of man. Is there a cross here? Next, can you give me that, that cross that's just there by the, by the way to the toilet there? Eye is not seen, ear has not heard, neither enter the heart of man the thing that God has prepared for us, for our glory. So at the Last Supper, he got bread and he got wine and sat them down at a table and said, Sit, I am preparing a meal for you. And he broke the bread. He says, This is my body. This is my blood. This is the meal I prepare for you. So we think, hey, beautiful, poetry, poetic, whoa. But while he's preparing his body, Judas has betrayal in his heart. So this table that was prepared for mankind was prepared with a betrayer sitting right there. You got to hear me. So the start of the Last Supper was the beginning of the, our, our Messiah laying the table down for us. Preparing a table. After that, He was in the garden praying. And then they came and the soldiers came to arrest Him. After that, they were beating Him. And they were accusing Him of all these wicked things. And then they gave Him a cross to carry. Oh, I has not seen. Yes, has not heard that what the Lord has prepared the table that He has prepared for us this table was prepared in a storm Yo, this table was prepared when everything stood against it He said if you know what was happening when I was preparing the table you will understand what you are eating So from that moment where he said the Last Supper, from that moment he was showing the kind of table that he was preparing for you. And he laid it down. It was full of betrayal. It was full of beatings and accusations. It was full. His own disciples left him. Ah, has not seen. Yeah, has not heard what the Lord has prepared for them. When he, what has he prepared? A table. And we thought, wow, this is beautiful poetry. This, this table story. No, it was not beautiful poetry. It was harsh. It was hard. It was cold. It was deceptive. Not him, those that were around him. It was betrayal upon betrayal. It was beatings upon beatings. The table was prepared from the table to the time of the cross. I don't know if you're hearing me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Come on, quote, 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 quote. I'll, I'll pick it up. In green pastures. Speak, speak, speak. Yes, carry on. He prepares. I need a table. Pastor Fee, where is the table? You 
got to watch it. He prepares a table in the midst of Judas. Oh, that is now a small one, but let's raise it up. Let's give, give, give me that, give me that stand there in the flatlet. He prepares a table. Say it for me. His table is only in front of your enemies. Oh, you don't see. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. He prepares a table for me. So in the time of the preparation of his table, there was betrayal. You're not hearing me. It is, it is a table to be eaten in the face of adversity. It is a table that is to be eaten in front of your enemies, in front of your betrayers. It is a table that is prepared in front of your enemies. Oh, oh. Come on, let's pick up the music. Come, let's pick up the music. Let's pick up the music. Oh, yes. hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I prepare a table for you, says the Lord. In the midst, come, Rich, I need you to pick it up. I need to get some oomph into it. Come, let's get some drums yeah, up here. Yeah. I prepare a table. Look at this. I prepare a table for you. In the midst, it wasn't a peaceful setting. It wasn't a simple little setting. It was a table that was prepared in betrayal. This is for him. In betrayal. It was a table that was prepared. You're not understanding. You are about to eat in front of your enemies this morning. Come on, sis, get, sis, get some move, please. Get some move. Come on, let's keep it. I want to keep it a serious tone. Come on, there's a table. Let's get the body and the blood. Come on, we are going to eat in the front of our... Look here. This meal is best served in front of your enemies. Because it was prepared in front of your enemies. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Ooh, you are my portion. You are my Come on, while we're waiting, we are, look at you. All I need. Who's got people you against them right now? You're my this is your table then. Oh Lord. You're my everything, oh Lord. You are my portion, you are my lot. My inheritance and my reward. My hands are clean, don't You are my God. You're all I need. Oh, you're are they playing in your downfall? Oh Lord. You're my everything. Are they planning to come against you? Oh, you are they are plotting against you? Oh, oh, you are, are they? Lord. This is your table then. You're gonna, your enemies are watching right now and you're eating in front of your enemies this morning. Is there more? Is there another one? Come on, let's bring it up. Bring it around. Bring it out. There's apparently lots. Come on. Take a big chunk. Take a big... I don't know how Oh, it's coming. There it comes. This is my body. Judas. Ha ha. Oh, Roman soldiers. Aha. Oh, they all left me. They ran away. Ha. You're all I've got. Eyes not seen. Ears not heard. The way he prepared the table. You're my everything. Oh, is your business failing? This is your table. Oh, is everything going wrong? Oh, this is your table. You surround me with your goodness. Oh, are there problems at home? This is your table. You are my joy. Oh, are you sick? You are my this is your table. And are you depressed? You. This is your table. You are oh, my is everything going wrong? Yeah, this is your you table. Are my so when you eat it, you tell your problem. This is what you say. You say, You're all I need. You're all I Somebody got. Eat the You're my everything. Oh, Lord. How can you? How can you eat while You're everything's gone wrong? Everything. Oh, Lord. So sometimes you're going to have to sit outside your yard 
put a table there. Get some good food up. Oh, they're eating nicely, yes. Yeah. You're my everything, oh Lord. You're oh, no. my everything. Come and sing with me. Here we go. Here we are. You are my portion. Woo. You are my love. My inheritance and my reward. Take, take. You're all and this I is got. his blood. You're this is the I drink need. that he gave us. You're my everything. Oh, have you got a blood on goods? What? What? You're my okay, wait, wait, wait. everything. Oh Lord. But prophet, they said I've got a bloodline curse. I'm like, huh? What? I'm a prophet. Um, my forefathers sins, huh? Yeah, but my father, yeah. How can you be so reckless? Uh, he made it in recklessness. So, come, take, take, eat, all of you. Drink. Come on, let your enemies see. Come. Oh, you failing? Yeah. Eat, eat is not that. Are oh, you struggling? Everything difficult. Don't eat with food. Don't talk with food in your mouth. No, no, no. You are my portion. Here we go. Here we go. You are my lot. My inheritance and my reward. You're all I need. You're all I got. You're my everything. Oh Lord. Some of them got a little bit dry, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't change You're the meal. You're my everything. Come on, Michelle, oh you need to gain some Lord. weight then. Why not gain weight on the table of the Lord? Sufficient one. You are more. No, this is not the soft this one. This is a soft Surround one. me with your goodness and oh, no, your that's too love. Jack, you, man, you are good my there. joy, and you are my delight. Go for it, go for it, go for it. And it's only in you Take it through. that my soul is satisfied. I want satisfied. us to eat it all. You are my portion. I want us to eat it all. If it is a bit dry, because it's been hot in the air, but it's all fresh, don't worry. My inheritance and my reward. There we go, there we go, Richard, come on, there we go. You're all I need. Oh, there's more, Richard, there's You're more for you. You're all I got. Woo. Oh, did the witches try something on you? You're my oh, everything. Is it October? Oh, Lord. Oh, Halloween. <laughs> what? Oh, did you say something? Oh, but they, they, they're going to put curses on the church. Uh, did you, what? what was that? Yeah, but you know about life. you got to be aware of that stuff. Why don't you know anything about this? Pagans are eating under their gods. The Christians must eat under their gods. Eat it. You're going to get dit gefreed today. Prophet, give me a stick, please. Amen, amen. Bring a stick, brood. Thank you, Heere. Hallelujah. Ah. Everything, oh Lord. You're my everything. You say you're not used to eating so much in church. About time you ate victory. You know that one that's plotting against you? Oh Lord. You're my I need some more singers with me. Is it good? Another sing, singer sing. or two come and sing with me. Their mouths are full of food. <laughs> Eat. Come on, the bell. Bust the play. Eat. Come on, Dion, what are you eating? When I'm eating, I'm watching enemies being destroyed. This priest meals his body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are my portion. You are my love. You're my love. Hold up the I need the words in I need the words, please. You are my love. You are all I need. You're my everything. Oh Lord, you're my everything. Let's sing it one more time. You are my portion. You're my portion. You are my portion. You are my lot. My inheritance and my reward. 
You're all I need You're all I got You're my everything, oh Lord You're my everything, oh Lord All sufficient one All sufficient one You are more than enough You surround me with your goodness Did we finish and your it yet? love You said I've never had so much community you before You are my joy And you are delight Richard, and it's up? only in you need more? Can I have some butter on my visit? Some butter? Yeah. My portion Look here, butter you wasn't part love. of the deal He didn't say there's the butter Be <laughs> <laughs> <We> warm <laughs> You're all I need You're all I got Are my everything Oh Lord Every You're enemy everything, Whether it be your health Whether it be oh physical People You ate it Excuse me Oh, see. oh. Wow that's a good feeling You know you're talking and you start bur burping like Jack, that's a new thing happening. But look here, we are you are eating up victories. You are eating up breakthroughs. Okay, just hold them up. You are eating off the table, the perfect meal. The perfect meal. So when you get scared, grab some bread and some grape juice. Hey Cyril, you grab it and you start eating. Don't stop there. You need to know. Look here, when you sit at a king's table, you need to know how to eat. Amen. You need to know what you're eating and why you're eating that. You must know the diet. Celebrate this is the diet given to us by our king. Celebrate. We need to understand what we are eating. We need to understand celebrate why and, and what is going on. So when you have a problem, take some communion eat it you say does it work it's about time to do it with understanding now amen because this is a turning point for all of us this is the turning point he is risen and he lives i need some more singers clear by the clear 